Well, it's safe to say that She-Hulk Episode 3 is currently the low point for this series. So let's talk about it. So we start out this episode. Jen is still trying to get Blonsky paroled, but there's kind of a um, wrench that's been thrown in the whole thing with uh, her seeing him on television fighting in an underground tournament. He tells her that the reason he was fighting in the underground tournament is because Wong showed up and needed his help, and because Blonsky's such a happy little helper, he went with Wong to help him. She then contacts Wong. Wong tells her that, yes, that was correct. He did come and get him because he needed a formidable opponent in the Kumite to prove that he was worthy enough to be the Sorcerer Supreme. She gets him to agree to be a witness during the parole hearing, which he agrees to. So there's that. Then after that, she goes in and she assembles a team of prison employees, all of which Blonsky's helped from learning how to read to making toilet kombucha to leading yoga classes, even helped one guard out with his bad marriage. I mean, so Blonsky's coming off as this like super nice, awesome dude. It's kind of got like the Korg thing going on from Thor which I kind of like, but at the same time, I'm like, but we've already done that, so why couldn't we have done something a little bit different? But I do like the character. Um, I like the way that they've portrayed him thus far. And I really think he's reformed. I know there's some people out there saying, well, he's probably just playing her, and then he's going to turn evil and all that. Mm, I don't know. I think they're trying to do something different with him, and I'm all for that. But I did think it was funny that Emil said that he has these seven soulmates, and when he gets out, they're all going to move together out on this land that he owns, and they're going to start a yoga farm. And at the end, he gets paroled. Jen wins the case. Good job. So intertwined into this whole story with Blonsky is this side story where Pug, Jennifer's new co-worker, has taken on a case which involves Jen's old co-worker, Dennis, the asshole from episodes one and two, and somehow he thinks that he has been dating Megan the Stallion, the famous rapper, and he has been duped out of $175,000. Turns out that this is not Megan the Stallion, this is Runa, a Asgardian shape-shifting elf, and she's basically playing him just for shits and giggles. So out of the good of Jen and Ginger's heart, they decide to help Pug defend Dennis. So they um, agree to be witnesses, and they have enough anecdotal evidence to prove that Dennis is a victim of fraud because Dennis is that much of a dirtbag, and he really is kind of stupid. So you've got this whole story here intertwined with the Blonsky story, which to me, I feel like this episode could have just had the Blonsky story, and that is it. You did not need this whole Runa Dennis um, dynamic. You didn't need to have that mixed in with this. You could have taken this Runa Asgardian shapeshifting elf story and made it episode four or episode five. Why did you have to intertwine it in with the Blonsky story? The Blonsky story, Abomination, and just on its own, could have carried this whole episode for the 30 minutes. So you didn't need this little side story. And I feel like that completely held up this whole episode. Um, other than that, I... I didn't enjoy this as much as I have the past two episodes, but I enjoyed it. I got a few laughs out of it here and there. Like Dennis just being a complete douchebag when he says, well, I can't talk about uh, another woman in front of a 10 because she might be uh, a future fiance, you know, just being a complete dumbass. But other than that, it was like you had everything set up perfectly for the abomination that you could have just concentrated completely on that and save the whole Runa thing for later on. If I had to give this episode a um, score on the old Swayze scale, it's a two. I can't go no higher than that. It's a solid two. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that episode four picks back up 
and this is just a dip you know like every series has a low point like i said at the beginning of the video i'm hoping this is the low point and it picks back up kind of like with the obi-wan series where i think it was episode four and it kind of was like yeah i'm hoping that's the same with this but yeah it's a solid two i can't go no higher than that and the cg looked worse than this i don't know how but the cg looked way worse in this episode it was almost like this was the first episode they filmed and then the pilot and second episode was after the fact and they got everything smoothed out maybe who knows because they film these not in order right i mean of course the pilot's always going to be done first but I, it just it looked it looked worse i don't get it oh and then the end credit scene we got to see She-Hulk actually twerk. Yeah. We got to see She-Hulk and Megan Thee Stallion twerk. I don't know if that's a highlight for me or a low point. I plead the fifth. Well, guys, as always, tell me what you thought of this episode down in the comments here below. Give us a thumbs up, give us a subscribe, and hit that little notification bell. I really hope this show picks back up because I really like it and I want it to do well. But with that said, this has been your old buddy John, and we will see you again next time on Behind the Beans.